Chapter Twenty Five of Mary, a Fiction. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mary J. Mary, a Fiction by Mary Wollstonecraft. Chapter Twenty Five. A few mornings after, as Mary was sitting ruminating, harassed by perplexing thoughts and fears, a letter was delivered to her. The servant waited for an answer. Her heart palpitated. It was from Henry. She held it some time in her hand, then tore it open. It was not a long one, and only contained an account of a relapse, which prevented his sailing in the first packet, as he had intended. Some tender inquiries were added, concerning her health and state of mind, but they were expressed in a rather formal style. It vexed her, and the more so as it stopped the current of affection, which the account of his arrival and illness had made flow to her heart. It ceased to beat for a moment. She read the passage over again, but could not tell what she was hurt by, only that it did not answer the expectations of her affection. She wrote a laconic, incoherent note in return, allowing him to call on her the next day. He had requested permission at the conclusion of his letter. Her mind was then painfully active. She could not read or walk. She tried to fly from herself, to forget the long hours that were yet to run before tomorrow could arrive. She knew not what time he would come. Certainly in the morning, she concluded, the morning, then, was anxiously wished for, and every wish produced a sigh that arose from expectation on the stretch, damped by fear and vain regret. To beguile the tedious time, Henry's favorite tunes were sung. The books they read together turned over, and the short epistle read at least a hundred times. Any one who had seen her would have supposed that she was trying to decipher Chinese characters. After a sleepless night, she hailed the tardy day, watched the rising sun, and then listened for every footstep and started if she heard the street door open. At last he came, and she, who had been counting the hours and doubting whether the earth moved, would gladly have escaped the approaching interview. With an unequal, irresolute pace, she went to meet him. But when she beheld his emaciated countenance, all the tenderness which the formality of his letter had damped returned, and a mournful presentiment stilled the internal conflict. She caught his hand, and, looking wistfully at him, exclaimed, "'Indeed, you are not well!' "'I am very far from well, but it matters not,' added he with a smile of resignation. "'My native air may work wonders, and besides, my mother is a tender nurse, and I shall sometimes see thee.' Mary felt, for the first time in her life, envy. She wished, involuntarily, that all the comfort he received should be from her. She inquired about the symptoms of his disorder, and heard that he had been very ill. She hastily drove away the fears that former dear bought experience suggested, and again and again did she repeat that she was sure he would soon recover. She would then look in his face to see if he assented, and ask more questions to the same purport. She tried to avoid speaking of herself, and Henry left her with a promise of visiting her the next day. Her mind was now engrossed by one fear, yet she would not allow herself to think that she feared an event she could not name. She still saw his pale face. The sound of his voice still vibrated on her ears. She tried to retain it. She listened, looked round, wept, and prayed. Henry had enlightened the desolate scene. Was this charm of life to fade away, and, like the baseless fabric of a vision, leave not a wreck behind? These thoughts disturbed her reason. She shook her head as if to drive them out of it. A weight, a heavy one, was on her heart. All was not well there. Out of this reverie, she was soon woke to keener anguish by the arrival of a letter from her husband. It came to Lisbon after her departure. Henry had forwarded it to her, but did not choose to deliver it himself for a very obvious reason. It might have produced a conversation he wished for some time to avoid, and his precaution took its rise almost equally from benevolence and love. She could not muster up sufficient resolution to break the seal. Her fears were not prophetic, for the contents gave her comfort. He informed her that he intended prolonging his tour, as he was now his own master, and wished to remain some time on the continent, and in particular to visit Italy without any restraint, but his reasons for it appeared childish. It was not to cultivate his taste or tread on classic ground where poets and philosophers caught their lore, but to join in the masquerades and such burlesque amusements. 
These instances of folly relieved Mary, in some degree reconciled her to herself, added fuel to the devouring flame, and silenced something like a pang which reason and conscience made her feel, when she reflected that it is the office of religion to reconcile us to the seemingly hard dispensations of providence, and that no inclination, however strong, should oblige us to desert the post assigned us, or force us to forget that virtue should be an active principle, in that the most desirable station is the one that exercises our faculties, refines our affections, and enables us to be useful." One reflection continually wounded her repose. She feared not poverty, her wants were few. But in giving up a fortune, she gave up the power of comforting the miserable, and making the sad heart sing for joy. Heaven had endowed her with uncommon humanity to render her one of his benevolent agents a messenger of peace, and should she attend to her own inclinations? These suggestions, though they could not subdue a violent passion, increased her misery. One moment she was a heroine, half determined to bear whatever fate should inflict, the next her mind would recoil, and tenderness possessed her whole soul. Some instances of Henry's affection, his worth and genius were remembered, and the earth was only a veil of tears, because he was not to sojourn with her. End of chapter 25